Christopher Columbus was a sailor from Genoa with a great spirit of adventure that had led him to sail throughout all the seas discovered up to that point. Now he wanted a bigger challenge, to explore new seas and new lands. One day, while staring out at the ocean, he asked himself if his mathematician friend was right and the Earth was round. Could he really get to the Indies by sailing to the west? This was the adventure he was looking for. But how could he do it? He was poor, and a fleet of ships would be very costly. Columbus asked the king and queen of Portugal for help, but they weren't interested in his proposal. So he looked to an even more powerful kingdom, the Spanish Catholic monarchy. They had wealth, ships, and the desire to expand their empire. So he dressed up in his best clothes and presented himself at the royal palace. He spoke to them about reaching the Indies by sailing west, contrary to what other ships had done. He promised to discover new routes, new lands, and gold to fill their treasure chests, making them the richest, most powerful on earth. The king and queen highly doubted he could come through on all these promises, so their answer was also no. But Queen Isabel was taken with his idea so she asked the royal sages to study it carefully. Columbus was upset, but he kept fighting for his dream and searched for people with money who would believe in him and his mission. At last he found them. The Pinzon brothers promised to give him money and ships, as long as he would take them along to participate in this adventure. Of course you'll captain my boats, promised Columbus. When the Catholic kings captured Granada and expelled the Arabs from the Iberian Peninsula, they had money left over from the wars so they decided to use the extra money to conquer new lands. They then called Columbus and told him they would help him with his adventure. Yeah! After months of preparation, their three vessels were seaworthy. The Nina and the Pinta were caravels, and the Santa Maria was a ship. They launched on August 3, 1492, from the port of Palos in Huelva, Spain. After stopping briefly in the Canary Islands, they set sail from the island of Gomera in search of the Indies. The first few days were peaceful. The sun was shining and a cool breeze kept the crew cool as they slowly made progress towards the west. However, it wasn't long before they didn't see birds or land. Every time they looked around, they saw the same thing, water. Water and nothing else. One day, enormous black clouds appeared on the horizon. The winds kicked up, and along with the winds came waves that tossed the ships around ferociously. When lightning lit up the night skies, the waves were as big as towers, and the seasick sailors vomited over the decks. 
Only the strongest men held up and bravely navigated the storms for several days. They were scared, but all they could do was stay strong and fight against the storm, hoping that the seas would calm down soon. Right now, all they could see were waves on the decks, drowning everything and eating away at the strength of the fearless sailors. One day, when they thought the storm was about to sink them to the bottom of the sea, a beam of sunlight appeared. Heat and calm had returned to their journey. They were ecstatic, but they didn't know their problems were just beginning. When Columbus ordered a recount of their provisions, he discovered that part of their food and water had been spoiled by the sea water. They barely had any more in reserve. Since they were the first to sail this route, it was impossible to calculate how much time was left before they would hit land. If the trip lasted much longer, they would die of hunger and thirst. So Columbus had to make a difficult decision. From that day on, everyone must eat and drink half portions. Oh. The sailors were exhausted, hungry, thirsty, and sunburned. One day they couldn't take any more. They gathered on the decks and demanded that the captains give them more water and food, or else there would be mutiny. They would take over the ships by force. Columbus tried to settle them down and make them understand that they had to eat and drink less because running out of supplies mid-journey would surely mean they would die. But the sailors didn't care about the future. They just wanted to eat and drink. They yelled insults in loud, angry voices. And just when the angriest ones started up the ladders with knives in their mouths to threaten the captain, a shout from the top of the headmast of the Pinta put everyone on alert. <laughs> Land ahoy! These two words ran quickly through the ship decks, and sailors ran to the bows to see the land with their own eyes. A dark spot appeared in the clouds on the distant horizon. As the hours passed, the spot took on more colors and became a small green surface. A bit later, they saw the outline of the island become clearer as they approached. They exploded with happiness. We're saved! The island would surely have fresh water, plants and animals for food, and perhaps people? They had heard stories about islands with strange men who behave like beasts. Soon they would discover if this place was a paradise or if it was just another chapter in their dangerous adventure. On October 12, 1492, Columbus and the Pinzon brothers set foot on land with a group of sailors. They were walking along the tranquil, beautiful beach when a group of naked men appeared with spears and collars. Since they had no common language, they resorted to gestures and smiles. The Spaniards called them Indians because they thought they were in the Indies, and these were the native inhabitants.
They gave costume jewelry of little value in exchange for foreign foods. This was their first discovery. These lands produced new fruits they had never seen before. Over the course of a few weeks, they regained their strength on the beaches of what is known today as the Caribbean. When they realized there was no gold there, they left Guanahani Island to explore other places in the area. In January, after exploring many islands and losing the Santa Maria, which turned into wood for a fort, the Pinta and the Nina set sail for the trip back to Spain. When he arrived, Columbus hurried to tell the Catholic kings about his discoveries. He brought jewels, food, and some Indians, which was valued enough to fund four more trips. During these next trips, he visited new islands and set foot on the continent. Columbus passed away without realizing the significance of his discovery. He thought he had reached the Indies through a different route, but he had done something much more important when his successor, America Vespucci, drew a map of all the lands Columbus and other sailors had arrived, he realized they had discovered a new continent about which they knew nothing. They christened the continent America after the name of its first topographer. I thought we had discovered something important, but in reality, I had drawn out a map of beautiful lands that had already been inhabited for thousands of years. So we didn't really discover anything. Oh. 